This is the Fitbit Versa 2, Fitbit's latest foray into the smartwatch market. And while it may be seriously lacking in a few key areas, it is class leading in others. So today, let's see if it's worth our hard-earned cash. Opening up the box here, we're presented with the Fitbit front and center. And directly below that is a quick start guide. And underneath that is a large watch band on the left and the charger on the right. Minimalist packaging, but still very nice. Taking a look at the watch itself here, it features an OLED display behind a pane of Gorilla Glass that pools at the edges of the anodized aluminum chassis. Personally, I think it looks like a slightly tweaked version of the Apple Watch, but that's not a bad thing. The first negative with this watch that I discovered as soon as I unboxed it is the charger. I don't know who at Fitbit thought this clamp-in design with the cable inexplicably extruding from the back was a good idea, but I'm here to tell you it wasn't. Aside from face down, you can really only try and balance it on its side. It does at least top off very quickly though, thanks to the physical power contacts on the back of the watch. You also don't have to charge it very often, but we'll get to that more in a sec. On the software side of things, I have mixed feelings. A swipe down from the top gets you your notifications from your phone and your quick launch bar that'll take you to music control, wallet, and quick settings. Music control works a solid 50% of the time for me. Often I'll be playing something on my phone and the watch doesn't even detect it. The quick settings are nice. You can adjust things like brightness profiles, always on display, raised to wake, and more. Notifications work about as expected. Swipe to remove from both the watch and the phone, or tap for more options. Unfortunately, you can't reply to texts with an on-screen keyboard, which did come in handy on my last smartwatch. Instead, you can just select from a few customizable canned responses. Swiping up gets you your fitness data, which is an area where this watch really shines. Fitbit's fitness heritage really pays off here. You can see metrics about all sorts of things, like step count, stair count, heart rate, water intake, sleep data, and more. Something that took a few days for me to realize is that at the bottom of this list, you can customize what information appears here. Tapping settings brings up a bunch of checkboxes for you to choose from. Tapping and holding on the data tiles lets you rearrange them. Swiping left from the watch face takes you to your app screen, and this is where things kinda start to fall apart. Not only is the app screen far less efficient than iOS or Wear OS, but the app selection is a fraction of the size. You wanna check your emails? You can't do that. You wanna read an SMS thread? You can't do that. You wanna control Spotify without a premium account? Can't do that either. In my opinion, these are basic things that really all smartwatches should be able to do, and all were an absolute breeze to do on my last smartwatch, the LG Watch Style. There are some things you can do, like control Spotify Premium, Pandora, adjust your hue lighting, and more, but the app library just doesn't hold up to its competitors. It is worth noting though that the software it does have has been crash-free and butter smooth for me. Now, in exchange for that somewhat limited software, you get stellar battery life. For me, it lasts four days, no problem, but the always-on display does cut that in half. Still, that's miles ahead of my LG watch, which was lucky to make it through one day. Battery life is definitely one of the strongest points for this watch. The Fitbit app on your phone is a necessity to connect it to the watch, load apps, and download new watch faces. On a whole, it works good. I don't find it to be particularly intuitive though. The actual page for installing apps and watch faces is buried pretty deep under a lot more taps than I'd like, since I also can't install new apps or watch faces from the watch itself. Downloading them also takes forever. Since I don't have any paint for you to watch dry while this installs, I'll speed it up a little. Watch faces are thankfully plentiful, 
but are also slow to install. You can also configure Fitbit Pay from this app, but since neither my bank nor my credit card are supported, I couldn't test it. The optical heart rate monitor that uses Fitbit's Pure Pulse technology seemed to be pretty accurate in my admittedly unscientific testing. The watch is also water resistant down to 50 meters, which is deeper than I ever planned to go. Raised to Wake has worked excellent for me, and the comparatively small screen and large bezels surprisingly haven't really bothered me, mostly because the deep blacks of that OLED display blend in so well. Overall, I can live with the shortcomings for the battery life, and the software can always be improved with a simple update. And now that Google is buying Fitbit, maybe some of their software expertise can turn this into the best smartwatch on the market. Or, of course, they could just slaughter Fitbit's entire product line. Honestly, either option's got a 50-50 shot at this point. So, do I recommend the Fitbit Versa 2? Yes, but with an asterisk. If you're a fitness nut that wants a bit more functionality and doesn't own an iPhone, or if you just want notifications on your wrist and multi-day battery life like me, then this is your best option. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, and I will see you guys in the next one.